Hello, my name is Jeffrey Uza, and this is my presentation for a reorganization for Fire Prevention Bureau that I work for. Um, I'd like to start by saying that these are my opinions only, and no reflection on the, the city that I, I work for. Um, so I'd like to start off by first explaining a little bit what a Fire Prevention Bureau is. Uh, most people, when they think of the fire department, they think of emergency response, they think of trucks, ambulances, um, rescues, all the, the first responder things that, that we all I'll associate with the fire department and up until about a year ago that was my main focus um, within the industry but about a year ago I changed positions and I'm now um, over the fire prevention bureau fire prevention bureau is non emergency operations it's more of a preventative um, operations for the fire department for the city I work in we actually have three subdivisions of fire prevention we have new construction which is anything that has to do with plan checks, new constructions, whether it's a, a single family residence adding a garage or whether it's a you know, 27, 37 story high rise. Uh, we have um, life safety, which works with all of our uh, existing structures and making sure that um, they're safe and up to date and that we do annual inspections on them. And then we have a really unique subset called an environmental section. The environmental section has to do with industrial waste, has waste, hazardous material, Kuba is what the, the bigger um, overseeing language is used usually to refer to it, as well as collection of household waste. Um, so I've got some pictures there to show kind of what our guys are doing in action. Another area of our Fire Life Safety Society is a vegetation management program. Um, we have, under fire prevention, we have the responsibility of making sure that homes that are um, situated in the high fire hazard zone are cleared sufficiently so that operational personnel can come and defend fires during a wildland um, system, wildland incident. So basically Fire Prevention Bureau is underneath the fire department. It's non-suppression, non-sworn civilian um, personnel. And my job on this project is to create a reorganization for that division. So in particular, the city that I work for, the city of Glendale, incorporated in 1906. We have a, almost 1,600 employees. 30.6 square miles, a lot of those square miles are urban interface, urban interface meaning the areas where the houses are really close to the wildfire threat, and then we have over 200,000 um, residents. Now that 200,000 number of residents spikes enormously during the day. Uh, there's a lot of communities that come in from there, there's also a lot of uh, people not accounted for through uh, census bureaus on that, but I really would say that that daily average population is at least 100,000 more than that number. Budget, so it comes down to budget, right? The one thing about the reorg that I need to stress is that our budget won't change. Um, overall fire department budget is about 80 million. Um, a sliver of our labor budget is 1.731, 241, the number right there. That is the that is the budget that I have to work with in order to reorganize the structure of the personnel that um, are underneath the Fire Prevention Bureau. Um, the overall operating cost of the, of the fire prevention uh, Bureau is that 3.89 number, um, but the, really the number I have to stay within is that 1.73 number. In order to forecast revenue, there's a couple things that we can control. Um, overall, the money gets siphoned from the general fund. The general fund is in the overall city. The city general fund gets most of its revenue from property taxes, occupancy taxes, and permits. Where the Fire Prevention Bureau really has control over that is in the permits. The permitting fees and we're going to talk a little bit about that although it's not a business in the sense where if we increase profits or if we decrease expenses I'm not able to put that money back into our division that goes back into general fund the money comes back to me with that fixed 1.7 million dollar budget for labor um, but what I can do is I can forecast our the revenue that we have control over which is the permitting fee and I can kind of forecast that and let let you guys know that I believe that that's going to be consistent over the next five years so how do I know? Permits. So we get money out of permits uh, basically for small construction, big construction, any anything that touches the uh, um, construction industry within the city of, of Glendale, the 30.5 square miles. Um, one way to forecast this is to really look at those units that are currently under construction. Now I just did a snapshot of some of the larger units that are under construction. Um, this does not take into consideration all the smaller um, smaller construction projects within the city but these are 
projects that are underway, they're already budgeted for, they're already backed um, well into it, regardless of a, of a recession, these things are going to go through. So we have a number of them in here when you compare it to the last 12 months, as I do in my paper, compare to the last five years, um, this is on board with our consistent revenue that we generate from bigger construction projects. And it's a good barometer to be able to say that, hey, these things are, are, aren't going anywhere. These are still two, three years within um, before completion. These are multi-million uh, dollar, dollar projects. The other way to look at it is the ones that are, um, or the units, the amount of units that are going to be increased. Another way to look at these units is we have a total increase of 543 units. What that what that means is if you have a developer come in, take a 15 story or 15 room apartment building, knock it down, and then they get permitted or they get occupancy approval for a 40, 50, you know, 50 unit apartment building or commercial structure, however you want to space out those units as. So we have uh, a total increase of four, 543 units over the next five years in just the ones that are permitted with us already, the ones that are, are, are forecasted ahead. So we've had some really good big names come into the city. I, I don't think that there's any reason to believe that our permitting revenue is going to decrease over the next five years. It's going to stay consistent. And then the currently approved but not a start of construction, these are ones that um, have already gone through the approval process, already gone through the permitting process, zoning permitting, already have the financial backing, they're on the docket, they just haven't broke ground yet. This is common for us where we're at with those. The stuff I didn't include are the ones that are, are in the initial phases because those you never know a recession could be, have people pull out from that. So as I talked about basically, um, you know, from what I can forecast and my limited ability to control the environment of our, our budget, the permitting process, which is the one piece of the pie that we really do have control over, I can show that we do have support for that over the next five years. So why reorg, which is really the, the whole reason for this project, right? Um, I'll explain the organization real quick. Um, we have a organization that has developed over the last last 30 years or so. We have some extremely technically intelligent individuals who fulfill some very, very critical roles. And I'll, I'll kind of point these out. You know, we have the fire prevention engineer right here and the assistant fire marshal position, which just have got vacated. Both these individuals have grown within the organization. The fire prevention engineer position is a senior level management position. This assistant fire marshal position is a senior level management position. And then the only other management positions that we have is this one right here called the principal fire engineer environmental safety specialist. So here's the issue with this. This position, senior level for a very technical position, which we don't necessarily need going forward, meaning the critical function of being a, a fire prevention engineer, which is a, a legitimate PE engineer who provides expert advice for uh, projects and is paid um, how we should be paid when it comes to th that sort of level of expertise, can be replaced by outsourcing those technical product projects and putting that cost onto that developer. Um, legally, we can do that um, because this frequency is one that you know you really don't have the need for a professional engineer for every single project. Um, any of the lower level technical questions and and day to day issues, we have that ability within our expertise within the Bureau of Well Building and Safety. But this position basically took away from the budget any sort of bridge opportunity for people to to move up within the organization and gain experience with that. So in the reorg, you'll see that I'm eliminating that position. Um, this principal fire environmental safety specialist, that is a very, very low level management position that we basically put in there in order to fulfill a person's uh, spot to manage the entire environmental side. She's very undervalued um, and the responsibility is such that because of all this top heaviness um, in our budget, she is unable to gain the experience necessary and be paid at an adequate level in order to move into these senior level positions quickly. In other words, she can't get the experience required to move into either the fire prevention engineer or the fire engineer, which creates a bottleneck. To put it simply, because I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but to put it simply, every one of these positions, these management positions, require two years minimum of management experience. 
these positions below, all of these below the management position, none of them allow for management experience. So we have three management spots, two senior management spots, and one lower level management spot, which none of the non-management personnel will ever qualify because they cannot gain management experience within the city, which requires them to go somewhere else. We lose personnel through attrition. We will uh, eventually um, continue to lose quality people. So in the reorg, in my, in my reorg, I eliminate the technical positions, fire prevention engineer two, and we'll do it through attrition when the senior individual leaves within the next two to five years, let's say. Um, the assistant fire marshal position will stay at the level that, that he's at right now. The difference is he will be over all three divisions, right? And those three divisions are gonna have two mid-management positions. So we got rid of a senior level position, which was the fire prevention engineer two. We got rid of the lower level management position, which was the, the uh, principal fire engineer safety specialist. We even those out completely, equal pay, equal span of control. And what that does is that now creates a path for inspectors to move up within the organization. These positions, the deputy fire marshal over environmental side, the deputy fire marshal over the fire life safety side, both these positions are interchangeable in rank, meaning that if somebody's gaining experience over here and they've been there for three or four years, they can easily move over to this side in order to fulfill the needs to eventually um, promote to assistant fire marshal. Same with the senior positions, the senior, the SSESS right here where I, I added these two senior positions. Those two now have supervisory um, requirements of the job, which will give them those years of experience, which will allow them through civil service laws to be able to actually test and promote into the management position. And then if you also notice, I made all of these inspector positions equal in rank the fire environmental safety specialist. So essentially, somebody come in, could come in at a bottom level, inspector level, they can get the technical knowledge they need, and then they can start moving to other divisions, gaining that additional technical experience, as well as when they get to the senior level, management experience, which will actually let them have a flow path within the organization. What happened, basically, was through time, we started making positions for the people instead of finding people for the position. This basically creates an org chart that won't change, stays the same, entry-level employee can move his way up. As far as cost, conclusion, so a reorg is going to basically, as I mentioned, create succession planning, planning uh, resulting in greater employee retention. It also allows a better span of control and more efficiencies within our divisions. Currently, we're not able to just have somebody go from the plant tech division to the environmental division, even though they may have the skills there, because there's just too many too many positional issues in rank and position that just doesn't let them go there without a title change. Um, there's no added cost to the city, basically eliminating that technical position and eliminating that lower level position and even them both up for two deputies stays exactly the same and it's in line with the uh, with the, uh, the industry standard for those prices, those costs. Um, and then the other thing is we have, and I didn't mention it in here, but I did mention it in my paper, we have the internal pool of people for these positions. And we have five positions, we have five personnel that are on their way to leadership position either within our city or somewhere else. All of them have master's levels or above, all of them have technical experience. They just don't have the ability to test or move in into different positions within our organization because of those restrictions of not getting that management experience. Thank you very much.